Man, and I use the term ever so loosely, of course. Uh, I got a new repair, and I wasn't really planning on videoing this, but this is a new repair I'm doing, which is similar to another repair, but it is it is different, and it has uh, some little bit sketchy of a setup in it, and you know it's one of these things you got to be real careful with. Anyway, uh, this is the exhaust uh, spigot on a 900 cc engine. Uh, the same 900cc engine that had the stuck valve and the crank, crack crank cases. Uh, anyway, this had a chunk broken out of it. And the reason the chunk was broken out of it is because when Harley uh, bored the hole off for the exhaust, they didn't center it very well over the port. So one side was real fat and one side was real thin. Well, this thin side broke off. So the repair on that ends up being cutting the spigot off, which I've already done. Machining a new spigot out of, this is either 4140 or 4130 steel that I had uh, laying around one and three quarter inches diameter, same as an exhaust pipe flange. Uh, anyway, I bored into the head a quarter inch deep, one and three quarter inches, and by eyeball, I centered the alignment up where it should be. So now, this is going to be the same thickness on all you know, all the way around, and it lines up almost exactly with the exhaust port. It's not cattywampus and all center like Harley made it. Um, so uh, the question then became, well, how do you attach it to the head? And uh, I'm really no good at TIG brazing. I'm not very good at brazing. Uh, I didn't want to try to weld it for fear of cracking the cast iron. So I did use regular old brazing, and uh, really it brazed pretty well. It was almost like uh, sweating a copper pipe, which I'm also no good at. But uh, anyway, now I got a bunch of brass uh, on the area where, of course, you want to clamp the exhaust pipe down. So I've got this set up in the mill the same way as it was set up when I was boring this out, except I'm boring from the outside in instead of from the inside out. And I want to take this down to a, a smooth, constant diameter. And between this edge of the cylinder and the spigot, there's not a lot of room in here. So conversely, the cutting tool, and this is a brazed carbide uh, boring bar, I've done a lot of grinding so that it will fit down in here. Uh, kind of sketchy, it might work. Um, I left a little chamfer on the point of the boring bar so that I didn't peel all the brass off. There's going to be a little fillet all the way around left over when I'm done, hopefully. And I say this was similar to uh, another repair. Well, it's similar to the same kind of repair I do uh, for chips on the intake side. The difference being this. On the intake side, that flange that the O-ring sits on sticking out doesn't carry any load. It just centers the O-ring. So on that one, I machine uh, the insert to be a little, a little bigger than the hole in the head is and it's an interference fit so you know it's not carrying any weight this is going to be carrying the weight of the exhaust pipe and the vibration so it's got to be firmly affixed to the head the one on the o-ring side is is just pressed in there with a little green, green loctite it ain't going nowhere it's not carrying load it's just keeping the o-ring centered uh you know around the uh, ar around that little spigot so anyway, uh, I think I'm set up on this thing, and we're going to do some outside boring. Uh, hopefully I'm not going to break anything. I, I practiced. I got a practice head I'll show you. Uh, I did a practice head. I did manage to break a tool on a practice head, but I think I got it all figured out, so we'll see what happens. And uh, before I fire the machine up, uh, I'm going to feed all this manually. Uh, you know, sometimes I do the down feed automatically. The machine's got a down feed function and a power feed, which works pretty good. But uh, as delicate as this is, I think I'm going to do it all manually, keep my fingers crossed, and hope for the best. So let's see what happens.
it's making contact. Okay, I think I'm down as low as I want to go. I'm going to move the boring bar uh, in towards the center of the hole uh, about 10 thou. Yeah, that looks good. I may be three or four thou off uh, in the uh, Y direction. Uh, but that's not too bad for what this is. Uh, not too bad. Yeah, we're going to do a little cosmetic sanding. We got a nice flat surface for the exhaust pipe to clamp onto. The exhaust spigot now lines up with the port. Uh, that's good. The owner should be very happy with that. Uh, frankly, it doesn't get much better than that. I got to do a valve job on it, so we're going to sandblast it, clean it up, sand around here, and, you know, eventually get it painted. But, uh, this is fixed. I now know that this head is salvageable so I could continue the work on it. So here's the finished head. Uh, the new exhaust spigot is centered almost exactly over the port. Uh, on the original it was off to one side. It was real thin over here and it was real fat over here. But I've got it centered almost exactly over the exhaust port so uh, should make the flow a little bit better. The brazing job is, is not perfect, but it's actually pretty good. Got a few little bubbles in it. This is the area that was hard to get the uh, cutting tool down into because you got these fins sticking up over here and the port over there. Uh, so I had to grind the uh, cutter to get down in here. But uh, yeah, brazing job turned out pretty good. I did a little hand sanding just to smooth everything up. Uh, all around here. So I've got a nice flat area on which to uh, clamp down the exhaust pipe. Uh, this head is done. Valve job is done. Port is fixed. Uh, the intake was okay from the get-go. Uh, this, this one is ready to go. Uh, this is my, my junk practice head. Uh, earlier in the video I said I would show it to you. Here it is. Uh, Practicing my uh, TIG brazing, regular brazing, TIG brazing, uh, TIG brazing, TIG brazing, TIG brazing. Uh, but anyway, uh, you know, I'll braze on a fin. When I use up all the air, I'll just break a fin off and move on down to the next one. You can see I'm running out of fins. Uh, practice my uh, first uh, valve seat pocket cutting on this here. 
uh, it's dual plugged. It was my practice dual plugging head. Uh, this is where I practiced the exhaust spigot uh, repair. Uh, this isn't the exhaust port; it's the intake. But you know, you could do it either way if you want. But anyway, I practiced that over there. And uh, there's your dual plugs over there. Anyway, practice that. If you're gonna be uh, working on a cylinder head, it's a good idea to get one that's so clapped out you can't use it for anything except to practice on. This has been a faithful servant. This is the cutter I used to do the outside boring job. Uh, it started out looking like this, but to get clearance around the things that had to clear, I had to grind a lot off of there. Uh, in order to put a little chamfer down at the root of the spigot, I ground this corner off. You can see there's a little chamfer over here so that there was a little bit of brass. It wasn't a, you know, a 90. It was a, had a little chamfer in it to help relieve the stresses in that area. Uh, I would have used a shorter uh, boring bar if I had one, but this is what I had, so this is what I used. Uh, anyway, that's what the cutting tools look like if you ever got to think about doing something like that. Uh, and with that, I am out of here. Hey, thanks for watching. Uh, get yourselves a coffee cup, get yourselves a sticker, join me on Patreon. But most of all, please subscribe. And I am out of here. Bye.